question from Martin Lee. Whose c is bigger? Wanna find out? There's only one way to find out, I guess. Okay. Oh. Oh, we're good there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from Sanmat 2. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad are Eddie's farts? <laughs> What do you reckon? I mean, I know, I, I know how bad they are. Yeah, they're they're pretty awful. I, I mean, certain I, days, I'll, I'll be honest, I mean, it, it's another level. I don't know. You know, I see Eddie eat, and most of the time he eats pretty good, so I don't know where they come from. But, uh, man, a life, they'll make your eyes water. Jeez, I got to get away from him. There's no, there's nothing better than hotboxing you in a car with my ass. Yeah, nothing better. I'm glad you get enjoying what I was having. I don't know if this has been asked before. If so, I apologize, but how did you and Mr. Hall meet? I'm always interested in a origin story. Jeez, well, I think the first time I met you was at the Body Power at the NEC 2010. Okay. And uh, I, was, I was a nobody then. Yeah, I think you'd won Will's Strongest Man at that point, or very high in the uh, 2010 would have been when I tied. You tied first, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember I asked you for a picture then, you were a nice guy. Yeah. And then I think the second time I met you was Will's Strongest Man 2012 when I actually qualified. And um, I was 24 years old, 24 stones, is around 140 kilos, uh, over, 300, over about 320 pounds, something like that. Yeah. And uh, Billy Big Bollocks, very young, very naive. Oh, yeah. Very arrogant. I'm yeah. sure you can remember that. The, yeah, I did. I, uh, I, I definitely remember you coming to World's Strongest Man in 2012. And Eddie, um, Eddie had a presence. He definitely, yeah, definitely had a presence. I remember for some reason you wore these short shorts, just, just that, and we're always taking your shirt off mm -hmm. and always trying to be loud. and. I, I honestly, at that point, didn't know what to make of you. You know, I was kind of like, "Well, this new guy is he going to be? Is he going to be something, or is he just going to be one of these guys that, that shows up and is loud, and we yeah. don't see him next year?" Like, you know? like, like Robert Oberst. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but, uh, yeah, it was. So, so I, I mean, I was young, I was naive, very arrogant, yeah. very egotistic yeah. is the best word to describe me. And it was a big deal for me, my first World's Strongest Man. I was UK Strongest Man, England's Strongest Man. You know, I thought I was invincible. Had my own door business. Um, and I remember I you know, flew the family over, mom, dad, sister, uh, sister wife. Wow, wife, I didn't realize that. Kids, yeah. yeah. And uh, I walk in, and I was feeling really confident, and then I walk into the hotel lobby, and the first person I fucking see standing at the, at the hotel lobby is fucking you. Yeah. The first person, my first Will Strongest Man appearance, <laughs> the first athlete to see. And you were fing humongous. Yeah. Like the six foot eight fing Shrek. Yeah. Just, I've yeah. never seen anything so big in my life. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I got your attention. Hey, Brian, you're right, mate. Yeah, shoot cans. And I'm just yeah. like, fing hell. Yeah. And I think for me, that's, that's when I realized how fing daunting it was that I'd set myself the tasks to be world's strongest man. Sure. And then you meet someone as gigantic as you, and it really fucking, it really hit my ego. Yeah. I'll be honest. It really yeah. kicked me in the balls to meet someone your size. Yeah. But it didn't put me off that much, obviously. No, it def no, no, no. You were, you were a guy, and I could, I could tell after that that you were hungry, mm. really hungry. And, and obviously, the, you know, in the next year, you got even better yeah. and came back, and, and so... You know, like I said, it, it, when I first met you, I didn't know if you were going to, because those guys are there that yeah. show up that are trying to make a name, and, and then you don't see them the next year, and they fall off, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you don't know where they go, you know. But uh, I could tell from that point, you know, coming forward, it was, um, you know, for me, it, it was very apparent that you were you were motivated and ready, you know, ready yeah. to win. So it, it was, um, you know, I think coming into World's Strongest Man, especially in that setting, uh, you know, getting to know you. We didn't talk a whole lot that no. first year at all, no. but, uh, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, through through that and through other things, you definitely earn my respect, um, you know, because you see these guys that are hungry, and, and you were one of those guys that was climbing up and getting better all the time, and yeah. then we started talking a lot more in 2013. Yeah. Um, 
in, in China that year. Uh, and uh, that was great, man. So that's kind of where it all started yeah. uh, to answer that question. You might have answered this one. Who were your strongman idols growing up? So my strongman idols, believe this or not, um, when I was a teenager watching The World's Strongest Man, for whatever reason, I only really remember Terry Hollands. And I mean, he just caught my attention, you know, a British guy. Yeah. I think, you know, he was over 205 kilos. And I was just mesmerized by the size of this guy. Yeah. And I think one of my best memories when I was a teenager was watching Terry uh, pull a plane. I don't know what year it was. But um, it really stuck in my head. And I think Terry was one of my idols. And then as I got into the sport, you, you became one of my idols, you genuinely. You know, yeah. when I first met you, I just never met someone so professional and humble and nice and just just an all-around an all around great guy. I don't, I don't just, I'm not just saying that because I know you now. Sure, and sure. Genuinely back then, I was just like, I want to be Brian Shaw. That's awesome, you know? man. Thank you, bro. Um, I would say for me, obviously, I, I would have to mention Bill Kazmaier uh, just due to the fact that he was an American and, and kind of, in a lot of ways, I think he kind of put strongman, a world's strongest man on the map. Um, you know, he was he was loud and, and you know, had a, a, you know, kind of um, an arrogant personality. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching him compete. And then, you know, for me, um, I would say when I was when I started watching a lot more World's Strongest Man when I was in high school, middle school and high school, uh, Magnus for Magnuson was the guy that was in the mid 90s, really dominating the sport. Yeah. And so I really looked up to him, but he was he was very very technical and I kind of picked that up from him you know every event you could see him trying to figure out a better way to do it and he would always have a different technique than the other guys and yeah. um, I really picked up on that for me and, and it was neat getting to know him and then have those conversations yeah. um, but I would say that, that kind of those two guys when I was getting in and then later on of course you know um, getting to meet you know like Magnus Samuelson and Sven Carlson and yeah. and those guys that uh, kind of the late 90s early 2000s um, kind of before I was really uh, getting into the sport that was really cool too so there's there's a number of different guys I mean I, I had a lot of respect for all the guys um, you know especially guys that had one world strongest man so um, just a lot of names there but uh, mm. yeah it was it was it was neat you know watching those guys and then getting into World's Strongest Man. And now I'm friends with the guys, you know, uh, which, which is cool. I mean, I text, text a lot of those guys I named off on a regular basis, and it's pretty cool. All right, this is a good question. Mm -hmm. And I already know the answer, but I'll ask it anyway. Who's the best deadlifter in the world? No, not that one. Oh. Not that one. <laughs> you, you would like that one, yeah. <laughs> Who would win in an arm wrestle? And I really, I mean, honestly, I think that's a no-brainer. Have you seen the size of my arms? I've seen that. I've seen how much fatter on your oh, arms. Oh, is that? I mean, yeah, like I could just yeah. pinch, pinch an inch, that's, pinch five inches there. Yep, yeah, that's good. I could just slap yours and they would jiggle for a day. I've just seen, mate, but it's <laughs> absolutely solid. How fucking big are your forearms? Yep. Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that answers it. Um, well, I mean, he's lucky I've got a bad elbow today. Oh, is that... Is that right? Otherwise, we'd right? be having this out on the table right now, on top yep. of that bin. Yeah, just on the bin. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah. What did you both place in your first strongman competition? Fuck. So I'm, I'm going to say amateur, like yes. literally the yeah, first yeah, yeah. time. So my very first strongman competition was 2007. Okay. And it was Blackburn's strongest man. So basically, basically Manchester's strongest man. I was 19 years old. All right. And I came fifth. I All right. Out of about 30 guys, you know, 30 grown men, and I came fifth. And I remember on the day, that was my very first competition, got the bike for it. Yeah. And I told my mom, my dad, my, my, my girlfriend at the time, and I put it on Facebook. I looked back, I put it on Facebook. I'm going to win the world's strongest man one day. And I said that at on my, that point at my very first oh, contest. Wow. I, and then 10 years later, pretty much to the day I fucking did it. Wow. That's crazy, man. Mm. So you said that before you competed or after? No, on the, my very first contest. Wow. After the first contest, yeah. literally as soon as we were done, I got my fifth place medal. Yeah. And on the drive back, I was like, I'm going to fucking win world's strongest man. Wow. Put it on Facebook. It's on my page. That's, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. I, um, 
So I, I just did a, uh, uh, it was Denver's Strongest Man, so just a, a local uh, Colorado competition. I showed up and I hadn't trained with any strongman implements, just in a normal gym. Yep. And I said, hey, I'm going to go do this. You know, and, and I showed up and uh, there were a couple guys there that had gone to like nationals and everybody was kind of talking about them being, mm -hmm. going to the next level kind of thing. And, and uh, I showed up and beat everybody. You won the, won the, con you won the contest. contest. Yeah, there was probably only... I would say probably 10, 10 guys in the heavyweight yeah, class yeah. that I competed against. But um, yeah, I won that and then I was immediately hooked, man. I, yeah. I, the next month I found another contest and the next month I found another contest. But it was um, something that, that immediately just stuck. You know, I was like, this is great. There's nothing better than yeah. I get to compete against these guys and just man to man find out who's stronger. So it was, it was an immediate addiction. Uh, that just grew for me. So that's incredible. You won the first one. Yeah, I mean, I the the first that was like I said, like a, a kind of amateur contest. The first time I tried to turn pro mm. was a different story, because I, I I showed up and um, I competed against. I think it was about twenty guys in that one, but um, that was in that contest. I did the second yoke I ever did was four hundred and ten kilos. Right. Second time I ever had a yoke on my back. Um, I thought I, I took, I picked it up and took two steps. I thought I had torn both my quads. Uh, you know, I'd never, that was the second time I ever touched stones was in, in a competition. And now when I got my, I got my ass kicked in that one, but I was like 13th out of 19 guys. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of the, the eye opening, like, all right, you know, I won my first two smaller ones and then I went to that next level and, and, um, in the car ride home, that, that's when I kind of had that moment of. All right, I'm I'm dedicated. I'm coming back and I'm do I or don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and that was a, that was a good thing for me too. I mean, you, you can learn a lot from getting beat like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, that that moment kind of took me to the next level. Huh? So, all right. So you will you will like this question. Okay. And I'm throwing it in for you. Okay. So you're welcome. But uh, what did it feel like to get the world record deadlift? The half a ton. Half a ton, 1,100 1, pounds. Well, I mean, firstly, I mean, and, and, and the, 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 the task that I set myself was just ridiculous. Uh, when I first, I'll say, when I first heard you come out publicly mm -hmm. and say, because I think we probably talked about it a little bit before you had said it. Yeah. And, you know, everybody, the, the, the deadlift, just to set the stage, the deadlift had only gone up, you know, a couple of kilos. Yeah. Every year, I mean, five pounds, something, you know, I, I think it went from like 1,016 to 1,021 and then maybe 1,025 or something like that. Yeah. But it was, everybody was kind of stuck in that lower thousand range. Yes. And then you came out with this, I'm going to deadlift 1,100 pounds. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody, you know, at first it was met with a lot of naysayers, a lot of people saying it's not going to happen. Um, you know, even in my mind, until you sent me a couple training videos, I was like, man, I think you're biting off more than you can chew. Yeah. And that was my initial thought. Yeah, yeah. Right. But anyway, go ahead. And I think that, that was it. You know, I announced it. 2015, I did 463 kilos yep. for a fucking speed rep. Yep. I stood up with it like getting out of a chair. Yeah. And I went to the promoters after the show and I said, how would you feel about putting a big lump sum of prize money if I pull 500 kilo? And they yeah. just like looked at each other and were like, yeah, how much do you want? Yeah, seriously. So I shoot the hands, agreed a fee, and then Monday morning, can't say too much, but I put a bet on myself. Yeah. Enough to set myself up for life. Yeah. And I went on a journey. And what I, what I can say is, is that I wasn't strong enough to pull 500 kilos off the floor. In the, the six months training after that, the 2015 world champs, world deadlift champs, the most I could do in the gym was 450, I think the best I did was 457 kilos. Gotcha. Completely raw. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, how do I get, I couldn't get past it. Every time I tried 460, 470, my head would go and I couldn't, I couldn't pick it up off the floor. Yeah. So I surrounded myself with an amazing team of fucking scientists, blood nutritionists, you know, hypnotherapists, doctors, nutritionists, everything. And I'm, taught, I'm, I'm, I'm working with these guys day in, day out, trying to find a method, a way that I can pull 500 kilo. And it was actually a scientist that sat me down one day and explained to me that a day-to-day -day person 
you know, taking the kids to school, do, going to work, doing the shopping, has access to at most 50% of the muscle fibers. Okay. Someone like me and you that trains 20 plus hours a week has access to at most, and I mean at most, 70% of the muscle fibers. Okay. But well, then you hear stories of mothers that have been in car accidents and they can lift cars off of the kids. Yep. And they have access to 100% of the muscle fibers and they can outstrength people like me and you. Sure. And this is what the, the, the guy said to me, is it, it's a flight or fight scenario. And that's the only way you'll get access to 100% of your muscle fibers. And the only way to get that adrenaline rush is to put yourself in that situation. Yeah. Like, I can't just ask you now to say, get your adrenaline up to 100% and, sure. and go and lift half a ton. Yeah. I, you literally have to have, you know, a, a pirate with a gun to your face. Saying, do it. And saying, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, do this or I'm going to kill you. Sure. And that's the only way you get that adrenaline. Yeah. So I had to create that scenario without actually having someone put a gun to my head. Yeah. So we were, I worked with, then I, then I ended up working with a psychiatrist and a hypnotherapist together. Okay. And we talked through, and I mean months and months, uh, very long sessions, very deep sessions. And I can't talk about the thoughts that I was thinking of. Sure. But I created a pinch point on my hand that I did just before I come out to the crowd. And I pinched the back of my hand and that set me off and it gets me in, the, in this zone where I start thinking this thought. Interesting. And I'm zoning out and everyone's, I've got, every, I've got my teams all clued up. So everyone knew they've got to put the belts on me, put the suit on me, put my straps on for me, do my chalk, put my mouthpiece in. It was all rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed for Everything. months in advance. So yeah. nothing would go wrong. Sure. And then, you know, I walk up to the deadlift bar and I knew, I fucking knew that my body was not strong enough to lift 500 kilo. The most I ever did in the gym was 457 kilo. Fa yeah. Fact. Yeah. So I locked onto that deadlift bar and, and I want everyone to go and loop, loop back at the footage. And I lock onto it and I rock it back and forth. And just before I lift, I close my eyes. Yeah. And that's when I go, I'm off. I'm not, yeah. in, I'm not in the arena. Sure. I am lifting a car off of my kids. And as, as I lift the weights, my yeah. eyes open and look into my eyes and that they are dead. That they're not in the arena. You, sure. you look into my eyes and they are dead. You had a, you had a very uh, strange look on your face. Very strange, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't until I stood up at the top and then it was literally as if I, I came back from that motorway of lifting the kids off in the car and I just woke up back in the arena and I was just like, Fuck yeah. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. And that was the most satisfying fucking feeling yeah. in the world. Oh, I bet. Yeah. To prove all those people wrong. And, sure. and I mean, the, the, the extreme pressures and whatever, you know, everything just went bang in my head. And I yeah. was like, fuck, I need to put this down now. Sure. But to prove so many people wrong. Yeah. I mean, envision this, Brian. Right. So what's your max deadlift at the minute? I just did uh, 1,021 at the Arnold, so like 463, 464, something like that. Okay, so 463, okay, yeah. right. So envision this, right? So get your max deadlift on a bar, and this goes for everybody. Put your max deadlift on a bar, whatever that be, whether it be 100 kilo, 400 kilo, or 463 kilo. Get psyched up, get your straps on, get everything ready, and then just before you're about to go and lift it, slap two 45 pound plates either side. Sure. How the fuck would that like, how would that go down in your head? It's un it's like unreal. Sure. Like and and ninety nine point nine percent of the population couldn't even fathom it. But that's what I did. I put I put no, two I, twenty kilo plates on either side and yeah. broke the world record by nearly four I, by thirty see, seven I, kilos. I believe I believe all this because I think and I I haven't done I mean I I spoke to sports psychologists a little bit. But I, tr I truly, genuinely believe, it's funny you're saying this and we talked a little bit about it, but I genuinely believe over the years, it's taken me years and years of when I go to psych up for a lift, training myself, mm -hmm. because there is, I 100% believe there's an absolute strength limit. Yes. Right? And so your, your recruitment, depending on how much adrenaline you can release yeah. and how, how much you can put yourself in that scenario where it is literally a life or death yeah. fight or flight I've I've had to work so hard at that yes so people talk about oh you know hype men and get you psyched up and that uh -huh. type of thing but it truly is 
like something you have to perfect and something you have to go to, but you can only go there a little bit. Yes. And I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't necessarily, I've never gone as far as like that scenario, what you just said, but I definitely think about different things and go to a different spot. You have when, to. when I'm going to lift a big yeah. weight. So I agree with that completely, well, but it's, one, neat, it's neat to hear you talk about it. One of the things it. I considered, and this is going to sound fucking nuts, yeah. I considered buying adrenaline and yeah. injecting it before the lift. Oh, my God. I considered yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't until I, I spoke to my private doctor, and he, yeah. we, we were trying to work out dosages and sure. you know, where to put it, where to put it in, into a uh, leg. Straight and, adrenaline. Yeah. Like if, you were, if your heart were to stop, yes, then yes, would, yes. that's what you would do. And we were talking about whether to put it into the leg or whether to put a big needle into my heart. That's and, scary, dude. And it was like, it got to the point where... We were talking, and then we were talking about the, like the risks of it, and people have died from trying trying I adrenaline. Can't imagine. Yeah. Um, so in the end, I was like, "Fuck it, let's scrap it." And this was only a couple of months before the lift. I was like, "I'm not right. It's out of my head now. We're not yeah. doing that." Yeah. And we went back to the sort of hypnotherapy, psycho, you know, sure. psychotherapy stuff. But um, your brain is. People forget a lot of times with us the mental side of lifting these extreme things. You know, it's just like a truck pull. Or, or flipping yes. a big tire. If you walk up there and you're doubting yourself at all, you're not doing yeah. it. Yeah. If you're thinking about yeah. flowers and bunny rabbits, it's not, not going to happen. happen. Not going to happen. No. And you've, everyone's got to have that flick switch. And I'll tell you what did help with my flick switch in training was like having a gum shield. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and like that for me was my flick switch. So I could be, I could be laughing and joking with a training partner. Like, you know, yeah. I'll fucking, you know. Yeah. Did this last night, did that last night. And, and then, then it'd be like, in. there'd be 450 kilo on the bar. And I'd be like, Right, done. Go and that would be my flick switch. Sure. So something like that, something as simple as putting your belt on could be your flick sure. switch. But you've got, but it's got to work for you. Yeah, yeah. That's that's crazy. That's exciting, man. Mm. I get amped up just talking about it. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 fun. Question from Rock Wilson: Who eats the most in a day? <laughs> well, yeah, I think that is a complete <laughs> no-brainer. Like I have never seen a human eat as much food and volume and. Frequency as you do. Yeah. Literally, well, I mean, we're on set sometimes 15, 16, 17 hours a day, and Brian cooks his food in the morning, puts it in furnaces, and brings it with him. Andy has steaks and burgers. Every hour, hour and a half, he is eating, you know, a good, a good sort of three quarters a kilo of food every hour and a half, easily. It's, it's a lot. It really and is a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's fucking sickening. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it really is. To be fair, you have cut back a lot on your eating. I'm massively. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. don't. I mean, I mean, I've dropped seventy something pounds now. Yeah, uh, I was eating twelve and a half thousand calories a day. I could have kept with you at some point. Oh, I, I unbelievable. No doubt. You you telling me about your diet leading up to World Strongest Man in 2017 was it almost made me sick. It was listening. I mean, because yeah. you were. Not only having like your normal meals, but then you throw in like ice cream and desserts and so like. I mean, I, I ate really healthy. Yeah, really healthy. But what I did is, is like after breakfast, lunch, and tea, and and dinner. Tea, tea. tea we call it tea. Yeah. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Dinner. I would there have a go. liter of ice cream after those three meals. A liter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and lunch and dinner, I'd have half a cheesecake as well as the ice cream. How, how big of a cheese? A proper family one. Half of it. Half of one, yeah. Holy cow. So I ate really healthy, but I was probably having, out of those 12 and a half thousand calories a day, I'd say 4,000, maybe 5,000 of that was shit. Wow. But I, ha I was just so fucking consumed with my training and yeah. my recovery. I just, and I, I didn't have the sort of expertise and knowledge to, you know, I mean, the, this vertical diet stuff that Stan Efferdin's done is yeah. fucking brilliant. And I've, yeah. I've incorporated that into my diet now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, red meat and only white rice. Yeah. And it's, it's worked. For me, sure. I feel a lot healthier. I've dropped a lot of body fat. I'm the same. I'm yeah. the same. Yeah, I, I was eating a lot more um, kind of junk calories yep. as well, um, even, even as... as uh, um, not that long ago. I mean, a couple of years ago, I was doing that, but I just didn't feel as good. Yeah. You know, like I, I didn't feel as uh, as strong. And I mean, I've done some tests, and all my blood work is coming back better. Um, I just did a DEXA scan, uh, which we, we did a video yeah, on. I saw it, yeah, but it was crazy. The change in one year was yeah. was ridiculous. So, I mean, I, I can only imagine after another year or two of that, you know, just feel so much better and, yeah. and look better. You know, perform better. Um, but that's 
Yeah, I would I would say for sure I eat more than than Eddie like right now. Yeah, um, I've never but seen again, yeah. you know, I'm I'm uh, still in that competitive uh, diet mode. You know, so yeah. I need I need to force it down all the time. And um, I know that they they uh, at times, you know, we're we're on set filming right now, and and uh, they're not happy that I'm eating so much. But it shit. is what it is. Tough shit. Yeah. <clears throat> From NJB. What's the best moment you've shared together? Um, I'd say there's a couple. Um, obviously, I think the moments where I've been there and you've won the World's Strongest Man have yep. been nice. Like, cause yep. I've always been a supporter of you. Sure. Which is a bit of a weird thing. You like it's. I'm, I, I'm sure you've been the same. I, I'm a competitive monster. Yes, and we, bo- and we it's, both are. It's yeah. human nature to almost hate your competitor. Yeah, but I'd never hated you. Yeah, and when I saw you, you know, I always knew my limits, and I think on some of the years, I think 2016, you won World Strongest Man. Yeah, and I knew I wasn't going to win it. Yeah, and you know, I fucked my hand. Yeah, and I was like, we went out and ate every day together. Yeah. We went yeah. went out for a meal every night. Botswana, yeah. The, <laughs> night, be- the night before the final, we're, we're going out and having a meal. Yeah, and uh, and I, that's that's fucking strange when you think about it, like, it, is, I mean, it what is. other sport does that no i can't think of any where the sportsmanship where me and you can go out and have a meal yeah see you tomorrow brian good luck and yeah. then wake up and then it's fucking competitor mode but even yeah. during competing i mean i i enjoyed sort of supporting you you know even like we had a few conversations right you know talking about the deadlift or the squat like i'm going to do this many reps to beat him him and him but i'm sure. not going to beat him and Sure. It sort of help you help each other out to, in placings and know what we've got to do. Yeah. So I think that was a, a really nice moment for me. Was it was 2016 Worlds. Yeah. And 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 15 Worlds actually in Malaysia. Even though it, you know, just you didn't win 15, did you? You did. Fit did. Yes, yeah. you did. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And helping you with that as well in little sure. ways. Just yeah. just just being a pal and, and just seeing you and seeing seeing success, mate. You know, yeah. seeing a, seeing a, a well that I mean that one. There's there's several moments. I mean that. Like you said, it's 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 a camaraderie. I mean, I, you and I in um, 2016, we went and bought mattresses. Do you remember that? Yeah, literally no, went 17, to a, 17. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was bought one of the bots one. Yeah, 17. But the beds were so terrible in the hotel. We were both talking about how we couldn't sleep and our backs hurt and all that. And we're like, you know what? Let's just go find a, a place to buy a new mattress and walk into the hotel carrying mattresses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was funny, man. Yeah. That was funny. I mean, those moments, and like you said, it's like the competitive moments. Um, I remember the, the truck pull in, uh, in Malaysia in 2015. Mm-hmm. You're, Eddie's really familiar with trucks, worked on trucks uh, before, and he knew how the brakes were going to release. So he told me, to just pause a moment before I started pulling that yeah. truck in the final. And, you know, I ended up uh, doing really well with that, but I wouldn't have known that yeah. because I'm not as familiar with those type of trucks. So, you know, it's amazing, like, little stuff like that um, goes a long way, you know, as a competitor. And then obviously I was there in 17. We rode back uh, together after you had won. So sure, in that moment, you know, where, where you're just so happy and, and letting that breath out, you know, that you had won. and. You know, things like that I won't ever forget. Yeah. You know, um, and we've had a lot of other funny times, but those are the more that, like, kind of just stick in your in your mind. And, uh, um, yeah, it's it's moments that, that nobody else in the world is ever going to have. Yeah. You know, fans of the sport, you know, can relate and that type of thing, but it's the behind-the-scenes, in-the-trenches kind of, uh, you know, stuff that, that you know, Nobody else is gonna ever experience that. No, you know. So it, it, those moments are special. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seventeen worlds. You know, I won. I think you came third. I was third. You yeah, third. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we drove off together. You know, I had a pickup, and we drove back to the hotel, and we went and ate, and ate a meal that night, and just yeah. reminisced on the contest and what went wrong, what yeah. went right, and you know, we hugged and cried a little bit. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But yeah, the nice moments. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm.